Hello my art loving friends out there. I know we usually do watercolor on this channel but lately I have been having a really fun time with acrylic paints and I tried out the huge bottles of Liquitex acrylic basics paints and I want to show you how they looked in several paintings in today's video. I have used Liquitex Basics in previous videos, probably way back in the very beginning of my channel. I did several dog paintings with them, and I have messed with them here and there since then, but it has been a bit since I've dug into this particular brand again. So it's been really fun trying them out again. Let's just get started. These are the supplies I had my students buy, the Liquitex Basics Acrylic 8 set because it has great color selection. This transom brush set, this is really great. I think it's actually transon. I may have said that incorrectly. Comes with the palette knife, all the brushes you need, and the Jukoki wet palette, but that one keeps going out of stock, so we've had to find some alternatives, but it works really well. Starting with this Jukoki wet palette, when you open it up, it, it may have been wrapped in plastic. I'm not sure. I have kind of gotten into it just to see what it was like. You can see it has a vent on the lid, and then it comes with two foam pads here. Those are the ones that you'll put in water and get soaking wet. Well, not so, yeah, soaking wet, basically. You don't want a lot of standing water. You don't want any standing water in because it actually stays really wet, but you can see it's nice and thick, very soft. And then it comes with 100 sheets of the paper that you put on top of the foam pad to put your paint on. And that paper is pretty water, soluble i guess if you want to say like it'll resist the water coming through at first but then it kind of lets the water through exactly right if you have the amount of water in your foam right because it can make your paint very goopy if you don't do this right and the idea of this is to keep your acrylic paint wet for longer you can see there i have my foam pad nice and moist and just stick it in there and you can kind of stretch it out a little bit if you want to and then you'll put, you could actually put water in the plastic part of this before you put the foam into, which I might recommend if you're putting your paint in there and keeping it for a long, long time. Like if you know you're only gonna paint for 20 minutes today and it's gonna be a week before you come back, I would put some water under there. Otherwise, it stays really wet. So again, be careful about how much water you put in there because it can make your paint too wet and then you kind of have liquidy puddles everywhere that you don't want. But you can see I'm pushing down on the paper. You're supposed to kind of spread it out and get the air bubbles out of it, which is not the easiest thing to do at first until it soaks up some more water. Once it soaks up some more water, you can kind of pull the air bubbles out and then you can set your paint on it. So you can see the instructions right there. And I just use my hand to kind of push away from the middle and pull out towards the outside edges. If you had a little squeegee or something, you could probably use that, but it worked fine for my purposes. I don't need it to be exactly right. I just need to be able to get some paint out when I need it. And you can see here, I've dropped some more water down in the plasticky part because I didn't feel like I had enough water on the sheet to get the air bubbles out, but I actually end up with too much water. So again, you need to be careful with that step. I would say maybe worry less about the air bubbles. I was trying to follow the instructions the first time because the only other Stay Wet palette I have used is my Masterson Stay Wet palette, and it's a little bit different than this one. So I was trying to get it just right. Anyway, I think it will be fine with a couple of air bubbles in it. And if you just wait and let that paper soak up the water from the foam without adding extra water, just give it a little more time than I did, then you'll probably have good luck with it without being too watery. But I did get it pretty smooth. I was pretty happy with this. Now I can pour my paint on there and start my painting. You can see these bottles are 75 milliliters of paint, which I was hoping would be exactly enough paint for a six week, three hour per week class for my students. And we still have four more classes to go. That's 12 hours of painting altogether. And I do feel like I'm getting a little low on the lemon color you're seeing right there, whatever that yellow is called. Don't actually have it in front of me and I can't quite see what it says in the video, but I, yeah, that yellow I'm using a lot. And then the white would probably be the next one to go, but we'll find out. I still have enough, plenty. I'm not worried about class today or class tomorrow, so. We'll just keep painting and see what happens. I do paint twice as much as my students because I do the project ahead of time, sometimes more than once. 
and then I bring it to class and I paint with them. So I would be the one who would run out first, but I do have a bunch more Liquitex Basics acrylic paints in my drawer. However, I think they're mostly dried up, so this could get interesting. We'll find out what happens. So the first thing I want my students to do is a mixing chart, and this is one I use in my watercolors as well. If you have six colors, then this chart does all of the mixing between the six colors without any repeats. It does take two sheets of paper. However, you can kind of see how it works in this little demonstration here. So what we do across the top row is the color in full mass tone, and if you're doing watercolor, you could do a gradient if you want, but we're talking acrylics here, so we do full mass tone, and it's been long enough since I've used my Liquitex Basics that I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot how transparent this brand is because I've actually used some really cheaper, cheaper brands. I don't know if they're cheaper actually. They're probably more expensive per ounce, but you get a lot of different colors. So what I'm talking about here is the US Art Supply Acrylics, which is kind of a what people would consider a really affordable brand for a lot of paint. I've used the Chocola Acrylic Paints lately and some other off-brand I can't quite remember. And their paints are actually really nice. They're thick and creamy, and I really like the US Art Supply ones in particular. So I'll put a picture of those up on the screen for you to see. So yes, it's been a while since I've used this particular brand, and oh, they are transparent. However, one good thing about them is when you start mixing them with any other color, they become more opaque. Even if you're mixing two pretty transparent versions of this paint together, mix them together, you get more opaqueness. So a bit strange, but I mean, I could see that working when you're mixing white in, but it seems to work with just mixing the other colors. So I'm going to speed you past this part because it's just a little repetitive. It is fun to see the mixes, however. One thing this mixing chart does not do, though, is mix your mixes with other colors. So for example, when you're mixing the red and the blue together and you get a purple, this chart does not then take that purple and mix it with, let's say, the yellow oxide. It doesn't do that. It only mixes the colors in the set with themselves. And if you noticed in the beginning, I said this is for six colors and this is an eight pack, it is because we are leaving out the black and white out of the mixing chart. We don't need the black and white in here. It's really fun to add the white in particular to any of these colors that you make because you can get a really nice opaque pastel-like color when you add the white, but you can do that on the side on your own if you'd like, or even like put a stripe over each of these colors by adding a little white into them. It's kind of fun to do that. I don't feel it's necessary to add the black in, but you can do that too. It's fun to get dark colors by adding some black, but I am not going to do the entire mixing chart. I just wanted to get some examples in here so my students could see how this worked and hopefully it would go faster for them when they were trying it on their own in class later that day. This mixing chart is available over on my Patreon site, which is linked in the description box below. This is the canvas pack that I had them get. This is the US Art Supply, so that same brand of acrylics I was talking about, and this comes with 12 canvases. There are two in each size, starting at four by four inches and moving up to 12 by 12 inches, so it's a great pack of canvas. It's actually, it feels like a higher quality than many other canvas boards that I've used before. I've been really happy with these, and I've done a lot of painting on them too. Paintings you probably won't even see in this video, but I'll show them to you eventually in the future. So I'm gonna choose the four by four and we're gonna have fun with a little painting. Because acrylic and just painting in general can get a little messy, I do like to have some kind of backer board for my painting. In this case, I just chose one of the other unwrapped canvas boards that came in the package and put tape on the back and attached it to that canvas board so that I had a nice solid backing. That way I can pick the painting up, rotate it around, paint the edges and all of that, and hopefully protect the desk surface. And now we can get to painting. So one of the hardest things to do with acrylics, in my opinion, is to get a nice even blend on a background, especially if you're trying to do any kind of gradient. So that's the first thing that I want my students to practice. And I actually have them start with a practice piece that is still a four by four, but it is not an actual painting. In this case, I'm doing an actual painting here. And some of you might recognize it from my advent calendar that I released last year. But anyway, that one was in watercolor. 
but it wanted to reproduce it in acrylic. So anyway, I'll have them practice blending and then I'll have them start a painting. They actually don't do this painting. This painting I'm showing right now ends up being an alternative, not really an alternative, like an extra piece. So if they finish their painting in class early that we're doing that night, then they can choose to do this one if they'd like. And a couple of people did choose to do it. Some of the others passed. They're like, no, that's too complicated for me. But actually, I don't think it's too complicated for them. I have amazing students and they accomplish so much. I'll show you some of their paintings. So I'm just getting used to the paint again and I really like the way the paint looks when I add a coat of white on the canvas first. So that's something that I do more of in the future and then I'm trying to add it in kind of after the fact in this painting because that bottom part of that painting will be snow and I should have added it more in the sky as well. It just creates a softer, lighter look and it does help the paint kind of spread and be a little bit more transparent without being so dang vibrant. I mean, sometimes vibrant is nice and sometimes it's not so nice. So depends on the mood you're going for, I guess. So after I finish up most of the gradient, I put in some peach colored distant mountains and this brush set is really nice. Now I have had a student say that their bristles actually came out of their brush set, but I have used mine now for probably two years and I haven't had any problems with my set yet, so that's good. But I also don't use them every day all the time like I do my watercolor brushes. I basically use them when I'm practicing for either a gouache or an acrylic class that I'm teaching or sometimes maybe when I'm painting with acrylic myself because if I'm painting with gouache at home, I use my Sarah Burns gouache brushes, but I'll pull these out for acrylics. Anyway, I'm putting in some more mountains there and just keep adding layers and just I'll speed you up through the rest of this painting because I have several more paintings to show you. But you can kind of see what I mean in some of these brush strokes, how the paint is pretty transparent. So be real careful, like I mentioned in the beginning, on how much water you put in your Stay Wet palette. If you're going to paint and finish painting in one session and you're pretty good about not putting out too much paint, then you can go ahead and not use a Stay Wet palette. You can see here, because of the transparency, I could tell when I put that brown on, there's no way that dog was going to show up. So I put a little bit of white under him first. That helps the color show up once you put a different color over the top. So I'm trying to make him more opaque. Didn't wait long enough for the white to dry because I was in a hurry. <laughs> so my brown got a little bit gray brown, but that's okay. And this painting is not one that's finished by the end of this video, sorry, but uh, I was just kind of throwing colors in, making sure that this would work when I actually did the demo in class. So it does get some alterations later that, like I take that little tree out that's to the right of the dog, that just doesn't work. Make the shadows not so weird and the canvas doesn't show through at the end, but unfortunately, I'm not sure I have this painting with me to show you the end product. But anyway, this was just a quick sketch to see if it would work. So please don't judge this too harshly because some of the other paintings coming up are sure fun. Now we're gonna move on to a different painting. You can see I have a different size canvas. I can't remember if it's a five by five or a six by six. That is the Stay Wet palette after about a week. So you can see how the paint's kind of melted down just because of the moisture, but it's fine. I actually really enjoy the paint using it mostly like that. You have to be careful though, because when it's super thin, it won't cover your canvas. So when you're grabbing your paint, you need to either grab from the super thin part if that's okay, or grab from the middle where it's still thicker if you want it more opaque. So this was kind of funny. This is a painting we do in all of our classes and I doubt any of these are copyright free references because I just choose stuff that I think is gonna be easy for the students. So none of this gets sold or anything like that. It's just for practice and I do tell my students that. But anyway, this one is fun. So we're doing another sunset because blending, blending, blending. They have to know how to blend their acrylics if they're going to do paintings that they're gonna be happy with. It's just part of life. And there is a fine mist spray bottle you can get that will help keep your paint wet longer. But on these smaller canvases, I didn't really wanna use that yet. But you can see I have redone the background several times, just getting used to the paint again also getting used to how the palette, the Stay Wet palette, is adding so much moisture to the paint that it acts differently when you go back into your palette after a week than it did when you first poured the paint fresh. 
So this is pretty typical when you're using a new supply like this. Jukogi palette is new to me. I had been using the Masterson Stay Wet and it's been a while period since I've been using a Stay Wet palette of any sort. And the paint, just getting used to the paint again. And a little trick I like to do for horizon lines is to grab a piece of tape and put across there so that you have a nice straight line. I've seen so many paintings where the horizon lines were very crooked or bent or, you know, slightly warped in some way. So the tape trick is a good one. Sometimes the paint can seep under the tape depending on what kind of tape you use, but just it doesn't matter. In this case, it's going to be a reflection into the water anyway, so it wasn't a huge deal. And I'm trying to scoop up some of that black paint that had spilled off the side of the foam there, but you can see that tape line will work pretty darn well. I'm really happy with the background in this painting. I think it's great. And then I'm trying a more stylized version of the reflection that I actually end up loving at first and not liking the more I sat with it. So it is something I am going to redo. I don't think I've redone it yet. I told my students also that I was going to redo the reflections. And then when I did this painting the second time, I did the reflections differently. So less stylized, more semi-realistic. And then we're doing palm trees. A really fun way to get a completed painting that a student can be happy with is to do something like this in the background and then only do silhouettes in the front. They don't have to worry about colors, realis realism, realistic colors, none of that. It's all just basically black or like a really dark purple or really dark blue that looks like black. So it's just a good thing to start with. Trust me, we're going to add color in, but it's really fun to start this because you can just have a really nice finished painting at the end that looks good. We'll be adding a bunch of color though in this week's paintings, so I'll have to show those to you in a future video. I think they're gonna be really fun, but this bout finishes up this painting and then I will show you the picture of myself and my students' paintings here now. So here are all my students' paintings and actually two of these are mine. Just curious if you can tell which two might be mine. I think you might guess wrong because some of these paintings are pretty darn awesome. Anyway, I will keep taking pictures of my students' paintings and I'll let you guys see them in some way or another in future videos or on the community post or something like that. Well, that wraps up the Liquitex Basics. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know if you've ever painted with this paint down in the comment section below and what you think of them. They're probably not my favorite brand, but they are still fun. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Bye for now. They're so cute.